This is an art attack. This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> Ah, hello there. Good to see you again. Hey, have you ever wondered what it would be like to be swallowed by a ferocious T-Rex or snapped up in the jaws of a crocodile or eaten alive by a man-eating shark? A bit like this, actually. <laughs> Good, isn't it? A killer picture frame. And it didn't hurt a bit. Come and have a look at this. Now, first, you need to find a photo of someone that you want to frame. <laughs> it could be you, it could be a friend, could even be a pop star. And it's best if the face is quite central in the photo. Place it in the middle of a big sheet of cardboard box card and draw around it so you have a box that's roughly the same size as your photo. Then you need to draw your killer's teeth inside this box. And you want a nice set of ferocious teeth that leave enough space for your photo to show through. So nice big fangs like that. And again, on the bottom, but leaving enough space in the middle there so your photo shows through. Now, it's best not to have any gaps between these outside fangs. See that? Otherwise, the edge of your photo might show through. Put those in there like that. And then draw a gum line on each tooth, there, like that. And... When you've done that, just do a nice big set of gums around the outside of the box. Uh, like that. And all the way around. So you've got a nice big thick lip there. Like that. Gruesome gums. So now you've got your killer's mouth, you need to decide what type of killer you want your frame to be. It can be any ferocious animal you like. And I'm going to do a shark. Now, the design needs to go all around the mouth. So I'm going to do some waves at the bottom here, just to give me a position to put my shark in. So I'm just going to do the shark's head. Nice big pointy snout on the shark. Like that. And don't forget the good old shark's fin. And the eye here. And don't forget, you've got these lines down here on your shark. Just do two like that. Now, when you finish drawing your killer, cut the inside of the mouth out and all the way around the outside, and you'll have something that looks like this. Now you can paint it using poster paint or acrylic paint. And the idea is to paint the whole thing first in a shark grey. It depends what creature you're doing, really, but I'll start off with a nice grey for my shark. Just pick out your shapes like that. Oh, around there. A nice bright blue for the sea. A nice fluorescent pink for the gums. And a nice bright white for the eye and teeth. And if you paint the whole thing, leave it to dry. And when it's dry, it'll look something like that. Look at that. And you can add on some extra detail. I've gone around everything in a black line. Then all you need to do is take the photo that you're framing to the back and just pop it on there like that. and you only need one bit of tape along that top edge there so that when you turn it round it looks like the person is being eaten alive and you can do any killer picture frame design you like how about a deadly snake and you can do any size you like depending on the photo that you want to frame. Try it yourself, a killer picture frame. 
Oh, those killer picture frames are really scary. Hello, it's me again, the head. Now, when you're making yours, don't forget to make sure that the teeth on either side of the mouth join up. Otherwise, the photo of your unsuspecting victim might poke through. And if you missed any of that, don't forget you can check out the Art Attack website for fact sheets on this Art Attack and all the others in the show. <laughs> Fancy a go at this. There we go. Silver Blade View Cannon. Look at this. <laughs> oh, oh trick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> yeah, I think I'll stick to what I'm good at. <laughs> A big art attack. Right, there's some stuff in here. Oh, what a fun picture! Now, do me a favour and make sure that if you want to go ice skating, it's on a proper ice skating rink. And another thing, wrap up warm, otherwise you'll be very cold children. <coughs> children. Cold? Chill? Chill, get it? <laughs> How do you draw nighttime pictures? Well, okay, you need dark paper, you need white chalk or pastel, and you need some moonlight. So, okay, let's put the moon in. I'm just going to make a nice circle there, like that. And just smudge it a little bit. Where the moonlight is just coming off the moon, like that. And then we need some clouds here. Just do some, like, 
little semicircles with the chalk on the edge and then smudge these clouds. Just gently smudge it with your finger like that. Then just let that moon pick out some little white lines on the edge of your clouds like that. Those little curves, see that? And then just use that moonlight to just pick out the edges of whatever's in your picture. Things like buildings. And just pick out the edges, no detail. See that? All the edges facing the moon. Just the edges. And just smudge some of those edges just to make the moonlight slightly softer. And how's about just the outline of some cars? And again, give them a little smudge. And how about some people walking out at night? Again, just the edges facing the moonlight. And finally, just down the side here, like we'll have a post. It's just the shape. And just down the edges again. See that? The edge facing the moonlight. And again, just give it a little smudge to soften it up. Not too much of a smudge. Just enough to make it glow. And there's the picture, just using the moonlight. Now, of course, in the town, there'd be other lights, windows, car headlamps. So let's stick some of those in. Let's start with some tiny windows here. Again, not too many people up at this time of night. Hopefully. <laughs> A few more windows here, like that. Of course, there'll be a couple of car headlamps. Again, just smudge them out. And don't forget a big street lamp there. Don't know about in your street, but in my street they're usually broken. or well, they haven't got a very bright bulb in, so I'll put them in. And of course, be one or two coloured lights, so let's just pop some yellow and red ones in occasionally. Red lights on the cars, and little side lights, a couple of colours in the buildings, and of course, one final smudge just to soften a few of those lights. Not too much, just a little tickle. And there it is. Try it yourself. Moonlight pictures. Just picking out the shapes down the edges facing the moon. Oh. Oh. That's another two Art Attack scrapbooks filled. And it's all with work that you've sent in. It's brilliant. Take a look at some of these. Now, Scott's unusual egg picture has been achieved by dripping ink onto wet blotting paper and letting it run. The splodges remind me a bit of coral. Peter's black and white still life has been created with watercolours and inks. Nice technique, Peter. Coloured washing up liquid has been used by Adam for his art attack. Nice colours. And what about this? Katie's art attack of White Cliff reminded me of my summer holidays on the beach. So how did you do it, Katie? I created my scene by sketching my design out first. I then finished it off with acrylic paints and added detail when the paint was dry. Yep, yeah, everyone brilliant. And do you know what? I often do that with my own art attacks. Add detail when the paint is dry. 
But <laughs> I've come up with another way of adding detail, doing detail while the paint is still wet. Now, to do this, you need a piece of coloured paper or thin card and a different colour or shade of paint. Now, I'm going to use dark blue paint on light blue card. Now, the paint needs to be quite thick, so acrylic paint is best, or you could use poster paint mixed with PVA glue. Just squirt a generous dollop of paint onto your card and then you need to spread it around quite quickly before the paint starts drying. So just smear it around like this. Great fun to do. Very messy. <laughs> and you know, it's best to use a big brush to do this so you can do it quickly. And then it's just a case of scraping a pattern or texture into the paint. Now, to do this, you could use old cocktail sticks or maybe the wrong end of a paintbrush or pen, maybe some cardboard. What about plastic knives and forks? I think I'm going to use this old pencil for this. In fact, anything you can lay your hands on that you don't mind getting paint on, you can get stuck into the paint. So I'm going to use this old pencil and there we go. The idea is to scrape the pattern into your paint. See that? Nice squirrely swell there and just keep going. And at the moment the paint is nice and soft, but this acrylic paint does dry quickly. That's why you should always wash your brush quickly afterwards. Otherwise it all gets clogged up. There it is, look at that. And as you scrape your pattern in, the colour of the card underneath shows through. You can do any pattern you like for this. Lots of different textures and patterns. And one more there, I think. And when you've done a sheet like that, just leave it to one side to dry. And this technique works really well with lots of different combinations of paper and paint colour. Look at that. Aren't they brilliant? All different techniques, different patterns. And you get really striking effect when you use a colour of card with a completely different colour of paint on top. Look at this one. Yellow card with green paint and lots of scratches and swirls in there. Now when you've done a lot of different sheets like this, look at what you've got to see if these colours and patterns inspire you to make a picture. For example, this one here, the blue one with squiggles on it, could be like a stormy sky. Then you can build on your idea, cutting out different shapes from your different sheets to build up a picture. Look at this one. I've done yellow paint on orange card and I've got this like, well it's sort of sand dune effect, so that can be a beach and then this pattern made me think of waves see that just curves there so I've cut out well it's a sea so I'm going to stick it in there like that so you've got the sky the sea and the beach and some of these other patterns I've done here well this one this sort of swirly sort of straggly pattern reminded me of seaweed you know the way it just reaches out like that so I've cut out seaweed shapes there and these curly ones, this was white paint on black paper. I've got some swirly clouds, and while I was at it, I created a little seagull up there. And this, well, look at this, a gold one, sort of, well, it's gold on gold, but you get that raised texture, so that's a good swirly sun. And just finally in there, I've cut out this starfish shape. And look at this, this pattern I've done here reminded me of a seashell. So I've simply cut that shape out of the pattern. And then it goes there like that. And when you're happy with your design, you can stick all of the pieces down, and there you have a scratch pattern paint picture. All made using patterns scratched into paint and not a drawing in sight. <laughs> and this technique works really well for lots of different types of picture. Look at that. It works well for animal patterns because you've got all these swirls here. Or what about some stripes? Again, brilliant for animals. Or how about even some blocks or squares? Good for some other animals. Or how about doing any size you like, combining all the different techniques together to make one big picture. Brilliant. And don't forget, you can check out the website for fact sheets on this and all the other art attacks in the show. So go on, try it yourself, a scratch pattern paint picture, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra! Mm.